Good morning and welcome to Rising. Through the magic of television, we have actually already filmed most of today's show. So I can say with confidence that it is a great one, a spicy one, a lot of pleasant bantering. None, none, none of us, you know, disparaging no, each other, I, but a lot of I arguing we, that is quality and we fun. We went back and forth in a really good way. Also, I have a banger of a radar for you, so you're going to want to stick around Long one. see that. I was able to get in a the, power nap. The, the people like, I got to say, my longer radars do perform better than the short ones. This is nowhere near my record, I got to say. No, it is not. <laughs> um, no. But there was a lot to talk about, so do stick around. But what's up first, Robbie? First, we are talking about TikTok, which is back in the news now that President Biden is signing a bill that would ban the Chinese own platform after the 2024 election if it doesn't take certain action. The legislation gives the Chinese-based company nine to 12 months to see to to uh, sell off the that asset to a U.S. Uh, to a uh, company originating in the U.S. or it would be banned. The CEO Xiao Chu took to social media to respond in this way. Let's watch. Hi everyone. A show here. As you may have heard, Congress passed a bill that the president signed into law that is designed to ban TikTok in the United States. That will take TikTok away from you and 170 million Americans who find community and connection on our platform. Make no mistake, this is a ban. A ban on TikTok and a ban on you and your voice. Politicians may say otherwise, but don't get confused. Many who sponsored the bill admit a TikTok ban is their ultimate goal. It's obviously a disappointing moment, but it does not need to be a defining one. It's actually ironic because the freedom of expression on TikTok reflects the same American values that make the United States a beacon of freedom. TikTok gives everyday Americans a powerful way to be seen and heard. And that's why so many people have made TikTok part of their daily lives. Rest assured, we aren't going anywhere. We are confident and we will keep fighting for your rights in the courts. The facts and the Constitution are on our side, and we expect to prevail again. Our community is filled with people who have found acceptance and compassion, offered inspiration and encouragement, increased their awareness and brought into perspectives, ultimately adding more delight and joy to their lives. Our community is also filled with 7 million business owners who have built their livelihoods on TikTok. While we make our case in court, you'll still be able to enjoy TikTok like you always have. In fact, if you have a story about how TikTok impacts your life, we'll love for you to share it to showcase exactly what we're fighting for. Meanwhile, we will continue to invest and innovate to keep our community vibrant, exciting, and safe. Through our US data security efforts, we have built safeguards that no other peer company has made. We have invested billions of dollars to secure your data and keep our platform free from outside manipulation. I can't say this enough. This extraordinary diverse community is what makes TikTok so special, what makes it matter, and what makes it meaningful. And we'll keep working to ensure you will always have the opportunity, the safety, and the freedom to enjoy all TikTok has to offer. Thank you. All right, now the fun thing about owning a platform like TikTok is that you can announce your frustrations with American political machinations on TikTok. And as for now, nobody can stop him. What do you make of this? Well, look, there was a tremendous bipartisan push to do this. Mm -hmm. Many members of Congress, both parties, um, Donald Trump famously originated the effort to ban TikTok while he was president. Um, again, this was supported by many people in both parties uh, for a variety of reasons. You hear kind of the harms to children aspects that we're hearing, social media addictiveness, the criticisms that are being made about all the platforms that I have many quibbles with the data behind, national security arguments being made, uh, particularly in the wake of October 7th, the argument that the algorithm's being tweaked to, to show you a lot of content to make you more sympathetic to Palestinians or Gaza. Um, Biden has took up the, the, the torch on the, Biden, on the banning TikTok um, uh, uh, thing that Congress has supported. Now, there are a lot of people in both parties who are also against it. Um, again, this is, a, as we always talk about, this is establishment versus the so-called fringes on both sides, um, where you have many progressive uh, legislators and media figures against this. And then you have, frankly, the three most powerful people on the right in terms of the media ecosystem, Tucker Carlson, Elon Musk, and Donald Trump himself now, belatedly, all saying that banning TikTok would be a mistake for reasons I agree with. Um, the, the, the power to do this, to single out a specific company for sanction in this way, 
um, due to its alleged foreign ties um, sounds a lot to me like the arguments deployed against both Facebook and Twitter in the course of the Russia gate, Russian election interference. Um, you know, we've had the CEOs of our American companies haul before Congress many times and accused of everything from murdering children to compromising our elections. Um, frankly, I often find it to be a lot of its political figures like working out their own failures and projecting them onto the, the leaders of the platforms. Um, all these platforms, by the way, more popular than Congress is. So <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot wrong with this, and a lot, you know, moving from false premises. And I think the precedent of doing this is very bad and very damaging. Even if the case for doing something about TikTok was solid, and I don't think the case for doing yeah. something about, with TikTok is solid. So here's what's important to know: there are 170 million TikTok users in America alone. Don't worry, you're not going to open your phone tonight and see a blank screen where there were once reels of dogs and whatever else your algorithm, your for review page shows you, this is going to be in courts for a while. Legal experts um, are debating whether or not there is a constitutional overreach here, as um, the TikTok CEO indicated. They're going to continue litigating this. There is this question of if a company were to want to buy TikTok in a for sale, what would that look like? Who would it be? TikTok is likely to cost tens of billions of dollars. There aren't many people, many companies, many CEOs, many billionaires who are in a position to actually acquire a company of that size. And moreover, those companies that do have enough money to do so, like Meta or Google, arguably, according to a piece in the Washington Post today, won't try to buy TikTok because antitrust regulators are unlikely to allow it anyway. Right. That's a great point. That, I mean, yes, th that's it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. We don't want, I mean, there's a whole contingent of people, of regulators, um, uh, and some of these very same political figures, frankly, who are concerned about monopolies and con consolidation in the in the tech sphere and wouldn't want this to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very, I think, entirely confused um, approach. Some, look, I have, on, on the harms to like children aspect, I have no doubt that doing nothing but staring at TikTok all day can be harmful for some people or is not a good use of your time. Just staring at Instagram would be the same way or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever it is. We can encourage kids to get more fresh air. I'm all for that. I think the, the smartphones and the apps can be distractions in the classroom the same way that if you were playing video games instead of sure, listening sure. to your teacher Sure, sure. But Robbie, can, honestly, but I have no doubt that this has absolutely nothing with weird safetyism concerns about kids. I don't agree with which that. Which don't apply to any, that equally apply to every other app in the world that isn't being banned. This does seem to be about the am a lot, amount of political radicalization and a counter hegemonic narrative news that is coming through TikTok in these really short, easy to digestible sound bites by predominantly young people who are able to cut through the news cloud and see things that are not allowed in the mainstream media context. We are an alternative media show that understands what an appetite exists out there for heterodox views. And TikTok doesn't have the same guardrails, the same barriers, the same hoops that have to be jumped through that the mainstream media is able to employ. And this is what I talk about at length in my radar, is that TikTok is inconvenient to establishment narratives, and right now, principally the establishment narrative around U.S. funding of Israel as it commits what the ICJ has described as a plausible genocide in Gaza. And you see, when you look at the remarks yesterday about the TikTok ban that happened in Congress, there is so much of the enormous volume of them where people are just outright admitting we think that it's China that's making the kids sympathetic with Palestine. We think we're going to accuse, we're going to say it's a national security interest for kids not to have the opinion, not just kids, obviously, majorities of Americans, to have the opinions that they have about the carnage that they're seeing coming out of Gaza. Mainstream media can be controlled. We, I talk about it in my radar, Jonathan Greenblatt, the ADL groups have actively lobbied MSNBC and, and mainstream media networks to have less pro-Palestinian uh, sympathetic coverage, but they don't have that same control over TikTok, and so now they're banning it. Right, and I do think, 
China does exercise, look, I understand that China exercises, could in theory exercise control over the content there, just as they put this pressure on Google when it was operating on China and all of that in terms of, mostly in terms of suppressing content that is critical of the Chinese government, Tiananmen Square, Winnie the Pooh, etc. That is the case. That's not an argument for banning it. And in fact, our own social media companies in operation here in the U.S. have faced pressure from the U.S. government. That's something the U.S. government could fix. The U.S. government could do something about the pressure that Twitter and Facebook, et cetera, faced from the FBI and the CDC and down the line. But they're not interested in doing that. They're distracting you about, you know, it's always foreign threats, foreign interference, foreign National narratives. Security interests, yeah. And uh, that is a, a red flag always in our books. More, uh, more rising right after this.